Music is universal in the sense every culture in the world has its own music. But the nature of the music itself and musical thought or musical discourse, how you speak about music, that is far from identical. One might venture the idea that while, for instance, uh, members of a tribe or a rural community may not um, think or talk about their music in uh, conceptual terms or offer you know concepts and categories to talk about the music or even teach it. Um, that is music exists purely as a performance tradition in many uh, in many uh, communities. But classical traditions must have such literature. Uh, one of the markers of classical music traditions, is that the music is codified, that is, it's organized in terms of basic categories. Uh, and we use these categories to talk about it, to, to discourse about it, even teach it. Now, if music is Shastriya, as we saw earlier, it's a body of rules, then these rules have to be cast in terms of general categories and two such fundamental categories in the context of Indian music, in the context of Hindustani music, um, 
as far as melody goes is the, the two uh, fundamental categories are swara and shruti. Swara which is notes and shruti which is microtones. We um, speak of music in these terms, we teach it um, and we have textual discussions of uh, music using these categories. We have textual uh, discussions with of these categories and with these categories. Right? Uh, and these discussions are over um, two millennia old. So we have quite an ancient history, not just of musical practice or music, uh, musical traditions as performance, but also musical thought. Now most of you would know that what I sang in the beginning were swaras, right, notes. Uh, in fact, I sang some uh, notes, some phrases of Viraga's Tilak Kamod followed by Jai Jaivanti. These are the two ragas, uh, notes and phrases of those ragas that I sang. So ragas at a very fundamental, at a very basic level are constituted of swaras or notes or tones. And so the first step towards understanding raga, this raga sangeet and raga is to um, um, understand, to study, to know about the swaras. So what is swara? Uh, so we have two things here, right? swara as a category um, and swaras as notes, the actual notes that we sing. And it's always easier to talk about the, the specifics, right? the particulars, that is swaras notes. What are the notes? And all of you would know, we have seven swaras, right? So, we have seven swaras. Sa, that's the first. Sa, sa, di, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. These are the seven swaras. And beyond that, you all know, comes to, comes the next sa, right? Sa, di, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa. That was the ascending uh, swaras and a descending set of swaras. And beyond that lie the same set of swaras in the higher region and the lower region. So you have sa ni da pa and so on. Sa ni ga and so on. So this is the first set of categories that uh, first set of concepts that uh, you need to know. First, the swaras, of course, the pitches, and you have the sa, which is the base, the adhara, the foundation of all music, and all music refers and gets meaning from the sa, which uh, we will see in a later video. That um, that never changes during a performance, right? Unlike. Um, other music like western music where the tonic can change in a certain piece. The tonic never changes for us. The sa remains the same throughout a performance, throughout many years for many performers. So, uh, so that is the adhara sa, adhara swara, the foundational note with reference to which all music makes sense. Every other note is fixed with reference to this Sa. And then you have the rest, the six other swaras. Now the between the sa and the ni. Mm. This is called the Madhya Sap. This is called the Saptak, a set of seven swaras. And this is also the middle seven, right? The middle range. And you have sa ni dha pa. So, nidha pa and so on. That forms the mandra or the lower register and the higher register is upwards of the higher sa. So, we therefore we define, we, we have three uh, registers we can call it. We call it saptak, madhya which is the basic, the middle range and then you have the mandra and then you have the tara. And a typical uh, Hindustani khayal vocalist would have a range from the lower part to the higher part, so a range of two octaves. It could be 
a, a wider range or a lesser range but this is a typical range of two octaves so we had so then we had the saptak right the set of seven swaras but we all know that you know, anybody who has taken a look at a keyboard or a harmonium you know that between one sa and the next sa you have 12 pitches not just seven so actually we have the the total number of swaras is seven plus five variants hmm? so there are 12 pitches between um, 12 musically useful pitches i must say there are actually infinite pitches between any two pitches um, theoretically physics will tell you in theory infinite pitches are there between any two pitches and definitely between um sa sa you have many many pitches but what we use in music is primarily 12 there are 12 pitches and this we speak of as seven shuddha swaras and five vikrata swaras or uh, five variants and in uh, contemporary uh, hindustani music this is the these are the shuddha swaras what i just sang corresponding to the major scale sari ga ma pa da ni this this is the these are the shuddha swaras with sa if this is the sa then these are the shuddha swaras and um, five five of these uh, notes ri ga ma dha ni they have a variant each so um what we have are actually 12 swaras that we use we constitute the basic uh, tonal material um besides the shuddha swaras we have komal and tivra swaras komal swaras are flatter lower than the shuddha swara and tivra is higher than the shuddha swara and this is the scheme uh, th- these are the 12 swaras sa of course re komal re shuddha ga komal ga shuddha ma shuddha ma tivra pa dha komal dha shuddha ni komal ni shuddha so this is this is uh, as i said the 12 uh, you know 12 tone system that we have in uh, western music it's something quite similar to it now uh, i'll quickly demonstrate the pitches many of you were already know it but uh, like mm, so this is the aadhar sa re this is a uh, shuddha re right shuddha rushab sa re sa re this is the komal rushab which is the which is lower than the shuddha rushab then again ga this is the shuddha ganda ga komal ganda again komal ganda is lower than the shuddha ganda then ma shuddha ma ma this is the tivra madhyam pa and so also for dha and ni da shuddha da da komal da ni shuddha ni ni so these are the uh, 12 pitches 12 swaras um it's quite difficult to sing all these 12 pitches like we sing the seven seven swaras to sing the 12 swaras is would be quite a, a feat because uh, they are very very closely placed so it will be like sa ri ri ga ga i can't do it so you have to practice separately for it uh, so we speak of seven swaras and their five variants um seven shuddha swara right we call it shuddha means pure uncontaminated but, but it really doesn't have any such significance in uh when we speak of shuddha swara it is just that we identify these as the primary swaras and the others as the variant and and this is completely arbitrary in the sense that is how it has evolved and there is nothing necessary or natural about it in fact uh, centuries ago there was another set of uh, 
swaras that are designated, that were designated Shuddha. In fact, even today, Shuddha swaras of Carnatic music are a completely different set. So, it just as a matter of um, uh, identifying or talking about this, these 12 swaras, we say that these seven are Shuddha and they have their variants. So, as a, this is a matter of choice, cultural choice that has evolved and has been defined over centuries. The, the way we choose to organize and name the basic stuff of music. So, Riga, Dhani and Ma, right? Riga, Dhani have a Komal variety, Ma has a Tibra or the sharper, augmented uh, variety. And how about Sa and Pa? Sa and Pa don't have any variants, right? So, uh, the right word called, they, they are called Achala. Achala means they, it doesn't move, it's fixed. Um, now, you know, uh, we will see later on that though we speak of 12 pitches, 12 swaras as pitch positions, when we actually use them in ragas, there is nothing fixed about it. There are very subtle variations. So, even though we say Shuddhari, the exact pitch may vary uh, very subtly um, depending on the raga, depending on the phrase, depending on the ornament that we use. And this is equally applicable to Sa and Pa. So, subtle variations, microtonal variations are possible even for Sa and Pa. So, in fact, the uh, Drupad tradition of the Nidagar uh, family I was just speaking to a, a master and he says, we don't regard Sa and Pa as Achala. And it is true. In, as a matter of fact, they are not immovable. There are subtle, very subtle variations. Just as we have in the case of the other Swaras. So, the right word for Sa and Pa would be Avikrita. That is, they don't have variants. Like there is no sh Komal Pancham or Tevra Pancham, we don't have it. We have only one Pancham, just as we have only one Shatcha. But microtonal variations are very much there, just as they are there for other Swaras. So, this takes us to the next category, next concept. Uh, in terms of which we talk of melody, this is Shruti. Shruti which uh, is generally translated as microtone. Okay, so, so what is microtone? I will demonstrate it, that is the best way to talk. Which is the next pitch? After Sa we have Komal Rishabh, that is the next Swara or flat Rushab. Sa re sa. So this is the next swara, right? Sa re. But between these two, and there are no other swaras between sa and komal rishab. But there are many, there are microtones, there are shrutis. Sa right? Now I will try to hit a pitch between these two. Ah. Now that was not quite Komal Rusha all the way. It was not Sa, of course. So that Sa Re that is a Shruti. That is uh, that particular pitch. You can call it as a Shruti. In fact, the difference, the interval is also sometimes called the Shruti. But um, needless to say, we don't use uh, Shruti in such a crude manner. I am just demonstrating it for uh, conveying what Shruti is. Um, in practice, it's, it's used in very subtle ways so that you, are, you almost you don't discern that uh, there was a microtonal variation. So, within ragas and within phrases, all swaras any swara moves subtly, there are microtonal variations and this is the, uh, this is what we refer to as Shruti. Um, and um, tradition, the textual tradition 
uh, says that we have 22 such shtutis, 22 microtones. Um, that is, while we have 12 swaras, there are subtler and more minute pitch, pitch intervals and these are 22 in number. So, this number 22 was advanced by uh, Bharata in his uh, very uh, remarkable uh, text, Natya Shastra, which was sometime around the 2nd to 4th century of the common era. And uh, this he did, he advanced this number on the basis of an empirical uh, experiment. You can uh, really look it up on the internet what exactly the experiment uh, was. And he, he said that uh, there are 22 pitches and it was based, as I said, it's empirical in the sense it is just what he was able to discern. He said, okay, now this is one pitch and then he tightened it a little more. As you know, if you tighten the string, the pitch increases, right? So, um, he, he said that as he tightened um, little by little, uh, he could, as he discerned a different pitch, he, he uh, you know, he ca ca counted the number of pitches he was able to hear and he arrived at 22. Now, this uh, is not contested, okay. You know, we have about two millennia or at least um, 15 centuries of uh, such uh, discussions, discussions of uh, musical concepts and uh, uh, the music itself in various texts um, from various regions of the country, in various languages indeed. We have Sanskrit, Persian and other languages. So this 22, the number of 22 is largely uncontested. Um, no, nobody in the, no later uh, theorist said, no, it's not 22, you know, actually, like, I can hear 24, or, you know, it's just 18 or something like that. This isn't contested. Um, but, and in fact, in the text, uh, in the textual traditions, the, these 22 pitches are distributed over these, uh, of this, over the seven basic pitches. So, typically we have Sa, Ma and Pa with four Shrutis. They are supposed to be, uh, they are supposed to have four Shrutis each and uh, Ri and uh, Dha have uh, three each and Ga and Ni have two each. So, you have 22 pitches. But you see, in practice, in the performance tradition, these numbers, the quantification of Shruti is not relevant. Shruti is a very is a, is a matter of great importance and nobody denies the reality of microtonal nuancing in the performance tradition and we all practice it. Uh, teachers impart it and uh, performers are very sensitive to it. But is it the actual numbers, that is not uh, of concern in the performance tradition. So, while uh, Shruti is very much a reality in, in that microtonality is found extensively in the performances of this music, the 22 Shruti idea that there are 22 Shrutis uh, does not carry much weight in practice. So, this is how the uh, musical material or the basic stuff of music is organized in uh, Hindustani music. Right? We have seven uh, Shuddha Swaras or sometimes it is also called Prakrita Swaras and then five Vikrita Swaras of which four are Komal and one is Tevra and you have Shrutis, microtones, which as I said according to theory are 22 in number but uh, practice does not concern itself with the number of microtones. Now, the important idea emerging from this discussion is that swara is not a single pitch. It is not a particular frequency, especially within a raga. For exercise initial, uh, for just initiating a person into the music, of course, they are fixed positions. But once you enter into the music itself, swara is a more of a an oral space and uh, subtly different pitches get lit up during performance.